But I remember her name. All right. It was Melody. Well, good morning. And it's a celebration today, so I decided to make some little upbeat music. Here we go. And you might ask yourself, Mr. Miller, what are we celebrating? Well, the thing we're celebrating is the fact that we're going to simplify some radicals. What the hell else would we be celebrating, huh? Yeah. And that's the radical right there. Now, because we are in a celebratory mood today, I'll show you, I'll show you my little sign up there. One second. You see that? There we go. Oh, there it goes. So we are uh, celebrating from the Lone Moose Marking Dial. There we go, we're celebrating. All right, it's time to simplify some radicals. I could make approximately um, 50 videos on simplifying radicals, I am sure. <laughs> we will find out. This will be the first one. Uh, so, first of all, you wanna know what the square root of 72 is? Well, you can put it in your calculator and ask your calculator, and your calculator will tell you that it is 8.48. Now, I put the little squiggly equal sign there because that's what it is approximately. Uh, and, and, but, but you have to round that, right? I had to round to make that. Actually, the numbers, they went on uh, off my calculator screen. And so that's why we have to simplify it because we want to maintain the exactness of the answer. We want to maintain the beauty of it. You see, that's beautiful, that's exact, that's rounded. So by definition, it's not the same thing. I have introduced some error and I do not want to do that. So. Uh, can I just pause just for a, a quick minute on this symbol because we're going to be simplifying radicals and you're going to be like, I don't even see a radical because maybe, maybe where you grew up, people were calling this a square root sign. Well, it's also called a radical and I'm going to tell you a little something about it. What's cool is this number up here is kind of a trip because it's a timesy sort of thing. So what this number does is it tells you how many times you need to, you're gonna multiply this number by in order to get to that number. That might not make a whole hell of a lot of sense, but, but let's, uh, let's look at this. What this means on a number line, I'll show you. Zero, one, two. It means in two kind of timesy counts. Again, we're not gonna be adding, we're gonna be timesing every single time. We're gonna get to 72, and we're gonna start at one. And the square root set sign says, well, what are we counting by? Well, it's interesting to think that if we were multiplying by 8, that's a possibility. 1 times 8 is 8, and 8 times 8 is 64. So, so 8's too small. 8 doesn't work. You might ask you, well, maybe we're timesing by 9. Well, 1 times 9 is 9, and 9 times 9 is 81. So 81 is too big, 64 is too small, so it's got to be a number in between 8 and 9. And so if it's not going to simplify straight down to an integer, then we got to do this technique called simplify radicals. So let's get it. That's what I say. You heard me right. You heard me right. Uh, let's go. So there's two techniques I see the students do the most often. The first technique is called the search for perfect squares. They look to see if any of the factors of this number are a perfect square. That's the first thing they do. So they come to something like this and they say, oh, 72. And they remember that 72 is equal to 36 multiplied by 2. And so what's nice about this is that that's a perfect square. It's all a search for perfect squares because if you can find a factor that's a perfect square, then look what you get to do. You get to evaluate that thing. Boom, and then you're done. In this case, the square root of 36 just became six. The square root of 36 is six. It's not like six, it is six. It's the same thing as six. It's perfectly balanced. Look, I will draw a balance for you. Look at that balance. That damn thing is balanced. You're, I know what you're saying. you're saying. You're saying, that damn thing is balanced, Mr. Mellon. I say, hell yeah. Look, over here, 
is a square root of 36. That's the number six. It's called balance. They're the same thing. They're the same thing. But we like this one better because we know we understand six a little bit better than we understand. If you tell somebody, well, it's going to cost a square root of 36, they're going to do a little math and say, oh, you mean six, right? You mean six dollars. So uh, we like to drop it down to integers. So that's why we went here. Now, Maybe you don't see that right away, right? Maybe you don't see that right away. And by the way, I guess you should maybe have just a list of your perfect squares. You know, you got 1, you got 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 49. That's 7 times 7. So 64, 81, you know, keep, keep it going. These are the numbers you're kind of looking for when it's a second root. And I wrote second root, and notice here I did it, because we don't have to write the two. The two is implied. If it's a third root, we gotta start writing threes, but the two is implied. All right. A couple other things you need to know. Let's go, a lot of people like the, the factor tree. I love, me, I love me a factor tree, I'll tell you that much, I do, I do. And so the factor tree, you start factoring the number, and usually if it's even, you just drop a bunch of divide by twos. So for instance here, I'm gonna go uh, two and uh, 36. Now I'm, not, I'm gonna assume that this is, now this is a perfect square, so I would just end here, but let's just, that that's, doesn't always happen. So let's just act like, oh, I don't know, that's not a perfect square. So let's go 36 is uh, 12 and three. Now the purpose of this factor tree, I keep the square root signs. A lot of people don't keep those square root signs and I feel like those, those students tend to get more confused. Keep the square root. What we're saying is the square root of 72 is two times 36. And 36 is 12 times three. And you keep going until you got prime numbers. Until you got prime numbers, numbers that ain't got no factors. And now what I got here, I got four times three. That's a prime number, that's not a prime number, so I'm just gonna keep on going. I got two times two. So now with your factor tree, uh, you don't have to, do, I mean, you can do, do whatever method you want, but I'm just right now just gonna say, okay, now I'm just gonna circle all the, all the, the numbers on the bottom. Now, this is, this is an important property with radicals is that root three times root three is just three. So really what I've got so far, I mean really if you want to think about it, is this. This is what I've said. I've said 72 is equal to root 2 times root 3 times root 3 times root 2 times root 2. Now a lot of times people put these little arcs or they connect the ones that double up because root 3 times root 3 is just 3. And if you don't believe me, that the square root of root three is three, then pretty soon you shall see, if not now, eventually, because the uh, square root of three times the square root of three is the square root of nine. And what's the square root of nine, sports fans? What's the square root of nine? It's three. All right, so, and this always happens. It always happens. If you square root that number by itself, you get the thing uh, in center there. All right, so this is going to become 3, or uh, that will become 3. Uh, root 2 times root 2 is going to become 2. That's here, right? Those two would become 2. And you have one left over, square root 2. That gives me 6, root 2, ha, learn. Next problem, let's go get it. Next problem, let's go get it. Okay. Now eventually we're going to throw variables into all this and there's a lot we can do. There's a lot of places we can go. It's a big world. It's a big world out there, but uh, right now we're going to stick to uh, integers. Now I'm going to go the square root of 40. Now I'm going to need to simplify this because 6 times 6 is 36 and 7 times 7 is 49. So this is not going to have uh, an integer answer. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the method where I just look for perfect squares that are factors. My perfect squares are over here. I got a little bit of race that time. So 40 I know is 4 times 10, and I know it's 20 times 2. 
So four times 10 would be the best thing to do because four is a perfect square. Anytime you can grab a perfect square, you should do that. All right, so now four, then this is the square root of four. It ain't four, it's the square root of four. They're different things. And the balance that we're talking about here is that the square root of four is identical to the number two. So I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna go two root 10. That is finished. Root 10 doesn't simplify. You should probably, you'll, you'll probably start to get a sense for the ones that don't simplify, but if you think of uh, the number 10, none of its factors are perfect squares. It's, none of its factors are perfect squares, and so it would, of course, uh, never uh, simplify if we're doing a square root. It never simplify because it requires you to have uh, factors that are perfect squares. Now you could do the factor tree on 40 as well. Factor tree would work wonderful. It would do beautiful things, I promise that. So we could go four and 10, but I'm just gonna start with my it's even, so I'm gonna use the number two strategy. I got 20 there. I kind of, I want four and say five, and four is two and two. Now I got all prime numbers at the bottom, so I'm gonna circle them all the low-hanging fruit. I'm gonna remind myself that what I have so far established is the following. That root 40 is root two times root two times root two times root five. That's the premise of all this. So we know root two times root two is just gonna be two. So that's why sometimes you go like that and then when you connect them, you just kind of write the number two there. And I got root two times root five. Well, root two times root five is root 10, which I knew. And, but out. How do you like me now? How do you like me now? All right. Hey, that's nice stuff, right? That's good stuff, right? Uh, one more. One more. Hey, why, why not? Why not? Cool. It's a little soccer for you right there, or, or, or football, depending, depending on my audience. My audience. I, I don't know, Does it, is this gonna make it more confusing if I go like this? No, is that gonna make it more confusing? Let's do it, let's do it. The answer is no, it doesn't, it doesn't change anything. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna simplify five times the square root of 300. Well that really still, puts the square root of 300 is a thing I need to simplify. So let's go. Got the square root of 300. Uh, I'm gonna first use the search for a perfect square technique. Uh, anything in the hundreds, uh, 10 times 10 is 100, so you should, be, you should be knocking out that 10. That one, that 100, that perfect square 100, you should be knocking that thing out. So I'm gonna go 100 times three. Square root of 100 is 10. All right, so this is what that's going to simplify to. But I still have this 5 out there, right? I still have this 5. So this just gives me 5 times, 10 times, right? The 10 is separate from the root 3. It's, being, it's all multiplication. And it's not like one term. And so I can just take the 10 and multiply it by 5 and get 50 root 3. So that done. Let's go over here. We got 300, right? 300, let's make ourselves a tree. I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna take my divide by two strategy if I see an even number. And then from here, I'm just gonna be, uh, I guess I could keep dividing by two. That's still an even number. I thought 50 and three when I first looked at it, but I'll take two and what, 75. Then I'm gonna take 25 and three. I'm gonna take five and five. Now I got all prime numbers. I'm still gonna circle all my low hanging fruit. I'm going to remind myself that so far what I have determined is the square root of 300 is exactly the same as root two times root two times root five times root five times root three. Cause that's four, that's 25. Four times 25 is 100 times three is 300, okay. Now I know root five times root five is just five. Uh, I know root two times root two is just gonna be two, and root three is all by its lonesome. 
So I'll buy a small one from there. So this gives me 10 root 3, which I knew already. And you'd still need to multiply that by 5, giving you 50 root 3. Okay, well, <laughs> I don't know. I, I Sometimes this is so hard when there's nobody in the room. I, I, I often have no idea what, what to do because uh, I can't field any questions. And I don't know what you already know. Uh, so I, I, I go with what I think. And I hope this is okay. All right. Uh, I uh, encourage you to uh, continue this study. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. And uh, I'll see you around, okay?